So first off, I want to thank uh, South by Southwest and Julie for uh, doing this. And um, thanks for letting me get up on stage with you. Thanks for having me. The next few, uh, the next hour is going to be the most exciting hour of your life. <laughs> You're going to leave here a different person. That's a lie. Um, who here, does everybody know what, what the OUYA console is? Can I get a show of hands? Do you know? OK. How many, how many backed it? How many ordered? Who's a backer? Really? Just these two people here? Three? Oh, come on. That's, I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> disappointed. Uh, Julie, so here's what I want to know. Why does the world need OUYA? Sure. We need <laughs> small question. just a small question. I can ask, answer that for hours. Um, it's really about enabling creators. And in our case, the creators are game developers. The television is the best screen for playing games. I remember playing with my twin sister, Super Mario Brothers, and passing the remote back and contro con controller back and forth. And I feel like we've lost that. And when you open something up to anybody, to any creator, you get you know, inventive, creative, fascinating things, and I want to open up the world of TV gaming again, and that's why we need it. Uh, so, uh, but TV gaming is alive and well, right? I mean, we've got Xbox and, and PS3, uh, uh, Nintendo's in the game. Uh, I don't understand, what does Ouya bring, what does Ouya sure. bring that they, they're not providing? TV gaming is changing. In fact, all of gaming is changing. If you ask someone if they're a gamer today, and they're honest, everyone's going to say yes. My four and a half year old daughter, Elle, is a gamer. And it's not just playing Candyland. She plays Temple Run on my phone. She plays Cut the Road on my tablet. We just have different expectations given all the different devices we now have to play games. You can have a wonderful experience on the traditional con consoles today, and you do. I would argue that the type of games we're seeing is changing, and it's getting limited. The budgets are ballooning for games. It takes hundreds of people to make a game, multiple years. And the most creative, exciting games aren't going to the television anymore because it's just so hard. I mean, if you think about making a parallel with television, network versus cable, right? You'd never see The Sopranos or Breaking Bad on network television. It just wouldn't happen. But when television opened up and cable came, now we have expectations that we want to see things like, you know, we were talking about it earlier, Game of Thrones or Boardwalk Empire. You want something that really challenges you and excites you and immerses you in this experience. And that's what Ouya is going to bring back to gaming because it says that anybody with a great idea can now build a game for that number one platform. You're not limited by how much money you have in the bank or how many people you work with. It's the idea that if you have a great idea, like if you've dreamt it, now you have a path to it. Okay, so, so, so where, where did the idea start for this then? You, I mean, were you sitting in front of your television playing your Xbox and you were like, this sucks, I need to change this? Or was it you were on your phone? Or what was the moment where you realized or you thought that the world needed something like Ouya in it? Sure. Uh, I love creators. I love the entertainment. So I love television, I love movies, I love the theater, I love video games, I love being entertained. And what I found, at least with myself and my friends, is that we were playing games on our mobile phones and tablets and it was a short experience, it was a sort of, you know, a distraction experience. It wasn't an immersive, I'm in it type experience. And I go home and I have this beautiful 60 foot television in front of me and I remember fondly back in the days when I used to play with, you know, my sister and I thought, this should come back. You know, there's no reason not to leverage the number one screen, especially when the stats but you're, but you're support it. Come back, but 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 there is a thriving game market. I mean, the, the market's declining. I mean, hardware and software sales have been on the decline for over five well, years. The, the Mobile the platforms have been those growing. Are, they're older, but I mean, there is well, a the, thriving yeah. community of gamers that play on their television. But that's a small piece of the entire universe of gamers. I mean, that's the best thing. It's that why do you have to go to a touch device to have a new experience? You can have a great experience on a touch device, but you're not. It's not a precise experience. It's not an accurate experience. You're not in it. You're not playing for hours on end. You're not necessarily playing in lockstep with your friends like you do with the television. And so you also, moreover, shouldn't have to pay so much money to try out a new game. I mean, one of the things that Ouya is doing um, is bringing the best model of games today to the television. So we believe that every single game you should try before you buy. And we believe that developers should be able to choose how they want to monetize that content. So it can be in-app purchases, or it can be 
you know, a demo and then you pay $29 for the game. You can have episodic games that are subscription based. I don't want to limit anyone's creativity whatsoever. I just want to provide a platform where you can get your, you know, your dream, bring your dream to life, I guess. Okay, so I want to I want to go back in time a little bit. I want to we're going to get back <laughs> to this. There was a lot more to talk about here and, I, and we are going to get to it, but uh, I want to talk about Kickstarter for a second. <laughs> it's kind of a big deal for you. First off, so y you did this project, this began its life as a Kickstarter project. Um, why, why, could, why couldn't you do this another way? Why couldn't you go and get funding and, yeah. and start a company just the normal way, the way yeah. normal people do it? So we began before Kickstarter. Specifically, we tried to raise money. Um, it was difficult. It was difficult raising money for a hardware business. Um, and in our case, we were doing more than just hardware. I mean, OUYA at the end of the day is really a software platform. I mean, it's a game ecosystem. We're, eventually, we're basically bringing an operating system to the television. Does that mean, but, I'm going to stop you there. So does that mean that in the future you, you think absolutely. there would be OUYA's made by other people? Um, I mean, the device, perchance. I mean, but we have a great designer, and we think we have a great look and feel that makes it unique. Right. That's exactly why we but hired you eBay Hard. kind of farming that out, letting people say, hey, go make your Look, at the end of the, the day, I would love Ouya to be on every single television, every single tablet, every single OEM's device that you can think of. And I certainly don't have to be the person that delivers that device, but I want the great game ecosystem and experience that gamers are going to have to come from Ouya. So you could see it being built into a television. I would love it to be built into a Blu-ray player. Absolutely. Are you talking to people about that right I'm now? talking to everybody. Can you specifically tell me who you're talking no, to? No, I can't. Do you want to share any details on any deals that you may be making? No, I right. don't. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. All right, that's, yeah. it's just us in here. We're all friends. Couple friends. No, I mean, Kickstarter was really our beginning. I mean, the thing about Kickstarter was, when we went to Kickstarter, it was just an idea. I mean, it was the opposite of Field of Dreams. It was, if you come, we will build this. And, and there was massive interest in sort of this new kind of console. I mean, I've seen it called the unconsole. Maybe that's what it is. But we're currently the leader. We want to remain the leader and keep building on that momentum. Um, and now it's real. I mean, we've delivered over 1,200 development consoles. We have games being built and showcased all the time on OUYA. Our consoles get unveiled and delivered early to Kickstarter backers at the end of this month, and we're prepping for our retail launch in June. Yeah, there's like four people here who will be, who'll be getting them at the end of the month. Raise your hand if you bought an OUYA. Okay, okay significantly like, like 16, more than like four. Stop people. it. It's just, look, you know, I get it. They didn't want to take a gamble. It's $99. You can do a lot with that. $99, it's actually a really good point that you bring up there, that you were working towards. <laughs> I was working which, to your price, yeah, your price which point, was, your you amazing know, price point. Look, it's the accessibility. Great content shouldn't be difficult to find. It should be easy to find. Right. We want to rem remove as many barriers as possible. If we can do OUYA for less than $99, we will. Um, but right now, it's $99 where everything is free to try, and it's really up to the developer to to grasp the imagination of the gamer and say, you want to keep engaging with my game. Right. Okay, so Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Uh, your original goal is $950,000. Yes. You raised $8.6 million. From 63,000 backers, which you is feel, the more important Do you feel good step. about that? Is that, a, was that a, I mean, how quickly did you hit your, your goal? We raised a little, we raised a million dollars in eight hours and 22 minutes. Um, Wow. It's on the Kickstarter page. I, I read it. Um, but I think, you know, that was really, that was an unbelievably fascinating day because it was the moment where we no longer had control, right? Typically, when you build a product, you build it behind closed doors. It takes multiple years. You put it out with tens of millions of dollars, and you say, okay, here it is. It's wonderful. It's great. I promise. Believe me. Buy it, right? I mean, that's how all products get developed or have, right? Right. You know, we talked about earlier, like there's this new hardware movement um, where we can actually engage our supporters and our fans and our audience and say, do you actually want this? And that's what was so fascinating about Kickstarter because at 5.45 in the morning in my sweatpants and my hat and my Uggs shaking at my keyboard, like I had to push the button which says, my idea is out here. There is no special sauce here, right? Here are my specifications. This is what I'm trying to do. You can copy it if you want, but I think myself and my team can build something great. Right. You know, if you believe in us, show us, right? And people gave us, you know, hard-earned money nine months they before they could touch, million see, dollars. smell it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. And so everything that we have been doing from that moment on is to deliver for our backers, and and in so doing, say thank you. So, so was 8.6 million enough to do this, to do what you're doing now? 
or is there money at from elsewhere? 8.6 million is enough to deliver on the units that we promised through our Kickstarter. Okay. Um, we also are enabling developers with that money. Um, we've also been running the business with that money. I mean, our team is growing every single day. Um, I think you'd be fascinated to know what it takes to bring something like this to market. Um, and we have just amazing partners that we leverage on like crazy. Did you, did you find that after the success of the Kickstarter project that um, the money that you had sought out previously was suddenly easier to come by? Yeah, of course. I mean, because we answered one question. So once you get $8, right? $8 million, people are like, I'll give you a couple you know, bucks. It's, if I got $8 million from one person, no, it doesn't solve it. I think what was much more telling is the fact that we had 63,000 backers, yeah. and we've been selling units every single day from the can website. You, can you talk about how many? You did 63,416 backers. Sounds right. Um, but but, but you, after the Kickstarter ended, you kept selling them on the yeah, site. Yeah, we've been continuing to sell on the site, and then early February, we launched with retailers. So Amazon. Uh, how, many have, how many have you sold? A lot. Can you give me a, a range? A lot. Like a no, I mean, a, we're, we're, a really, we're really pleased. You're not going to tell me enough. No, I'm not. Either. It ruins the... Two million? When it comes out, I've got to lose the oomph of the... Okay, so you're yeah. signed, you signed them online as pre-orders. People right. who ordered on Kickstarter, who uh, bought it on Kickstarter, funded it, rather, will get them at the end of the month. Right, so... And then... And then you're going to retail, you, and I interrupted you, but you're going to where? Yeah, we're going to retail Amazon, GameStop, Best Buy, and Target are all partners. OUYA launches in June. I mean, what's, we are delivering to our backers early. So they're going to get our units at the end of March. And then between March and June, we're going to con continue to improve and develop OUYA. So the UI is still going to be worked on. We're still going to get great games. And then also, we're going to listen to our audience about how to make it better. What do they think about our discovery mechanisms? How do they think? How do they think we're doing curating content, exposing great content? I mean, what I said earlier about building OUYA with our audience, we had this idea and we put it up on Kickstarter. And it evolved during the 29 days. So for, I'll give you an example. We got a number of emails from people that said, I don't know if you know this, but 8% of men are colorblind. And your buttons with the colored circles aren't great. So we said, that's not acceptable. What should it be? And before we knew it, we had a Reddit poll about what our button should be. And then the Reddit poll, the winner was OUYA, O-U-Y-A. Works out perfectly. It's kind of and, perfect, yeah. Yeah, and then they had another Reddit poll to figure out where the O should be in starting it. And so we adopted that. Um, where's, we, where's the O? At the bottom. OK. Yeah. Where we, it should it be? At, Eve said it should be it at goes, the bottom. It goes uh, clockwise? Counterclockwise. Oh, really? Counterclockwise. Interesting. Yeah. Um, we, when, we, when we ship the developer consoles, specifications are exactly the same. We did something unique. Um, it's not my lunch. Um, I don't know. Have I'm you sure the people any? that raised their hands have seen these. But these, this is the OUYA development console. Um, exactly the same as what you're going to see in retail, except for the material and the finish. Um, but when we ship these, we ask the same questions. So what do you love about this? What do you hate about this? How do we make it better for everyone? Um, we got a lot of feedback on the D-pad. It's a really subjective piece of the controller, um, but more people than not like the cross style versus the disc, so we changed it. My, my colleague Bob spent three days in Taiwan. He actually was not allowed to leave until he loved it and did better than 85% on Street Fighter. Was it Street Fighter? Where are you? Yeah. Um, is and that just a random did, person, or was that? No, it's my, okay, my colleague. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> How you know, did we, he know that? <laughs> but uh, it's, you know, and we think we did something really unique and great with it. And it's the same thing with the software. I mean, what you see today will be 10 times better in June. It'll be 100 times better in December. I mean, we're going to keep evolving it and taking input from our, our, our supporters. So, so as a hardware startup, and this is, you know, everybody I've talked to um, who's here, has been like just there's so many hardware startups. Hardware, the idea of a hardware startup is a, is a thing that is really happening right now. But you guys have huge challenges here. Can you talk about some of the, you know, getting the money from Kickstarter is one thing, but then you've got to make it. You've got to make the thing. And how do you do that? I mean, what do you do once you have eight million dollars and you need to go make a game console? You obviously had prototypes, but. Can you talk about some of the process of that and what the difficulties were? I mean, I assume you've been to China a lot recently. I have been. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, first of all, Kickstarter was not a do Kickstarter and then run the business. I mean, we were running the business throughout all of Kickstarter. Um, and the way that this idea sort of came to life was the first, just the simple premise, which was 
why not have an Android game console that was accessible and affordable to everyone? We talked to a bunch of industry veterans, developers, gamers. Is this something you would play? Is this something that you would adopt? Once we heard yes, it's like, okay, we need to build this. Can you build it for $99, right? I did a ton of research, teardowns that you can get online, going to sites like Alibaba and looking at similar type products, figuring out who the best partner in the market would be to support this. In our case, it's NVIDIA, who's been an unbelievable partner to date, helping us really you know, push this to make sure it's a great gaming console. Um, and then design's important. You know, I think one thing that this new hardware movement is showing us is that design is really relevant. I mean, this is a beautiful outside with an incredibly powerful inside. And we wanted to find someone who really understood that, and that was Yves Behar. And he's been amazing to work with. He's our creative co-founder. I mean, you know, between the Ouya and the Jawbones Up Band, I mean, he does unbelievable work. He really understands how to bring um, the consumer into the decision-making process, it's not just about what's inside. I mean, we could have made this the size of a dongle. Actually, we couldn't because we wanted it to be more powerful than that. But, I mean, it could have been even smaller. Right. Um, so, the first, so, we saw, so we knew we could make it. We signed on eBay hard to make sure it was beautiful and consumers would like to show another box in the living room. Um, and then you just go through the steps, which you know, we learned throughout. But you, you fly to Taiwan or you fly to China and you find ODMs that have relevancy building a similar product or an identical product to what you're doing, right? Then you just figure out what, what the, the best chips what is, are. What would the identical product to what you're building be? Similar product, set-top boxes would be a similar product. Okay, like a Roku. Yeah, or, or um, a game console like would an be a similar. Like an Xbox or a PlayStation sure. or, an, or a Wii U. Those are some of them. Okay. Yeah. So you're kind of leaning on those people. You're like, no, I mean, I think, <laughs> look. You're you like, hey, you're, you're building the gonna, Xbox? Can you build one of these? Look, we're successful. We are. We, I think we're successful today just getting this out because we have amazing partners for people that have done this. We're not all learning on our, you know, we're not learning as we do this. There are people that have done this before. Right. And I think that was really important. I mean, but what makes it so fascinating and, you know, when you ask the question about what makes it challenging, like, there is nothing special about this board. Nothing. Like, nothing. Right? You don't, you don't, by way, you don't hear a lot of... Uh People, when they're promoting their product, <laughs> so pick it up and pick it up and say, there's, it. there's nothing special there's about nothing. this. There's nothing. I mean, <laughs> it's all commodity components, right? It's put together in a way that is n normal. I mean, we, you could take a Nexus 7 board, cut it in half, and you're close to an Ouya. I mean, so I that's just, what's not... So I don't need the Ouya is what you're saying. I can just no, take my here's Nexus what you 7. No, here's what you need, right? You need the great game ecosystem. It, the, this is easy. Like, and as hard it is, but is that, that, that going to be proprietary? I mean, it's based on Android. Couldn't I conceivably take that and, and flash my Nexus 7 with, with your ROM? Are you, if you can get, well, our storefront's only going to be available on it, yeah. So because it, will we be, want, it will be proprietary. It's You're gonna, because we want to control the, we want to make sure that you have a great experience, and the only way to do that is to make sure the specifications are the same, identical, and as well as that it's, you know, optimized for the television, it's optimized for the controller. But here's, but here's the unique thing. This isn't hard to do. I mean, it was actually very hard to do. It's not called hardware by luck. Um, but the hard thing is to build a new game ecosystem, right? right? I mean, every single developer I talk to, the word opportunity cost comes up half a dozen times. And I totally get it, right? So how do you get people excited about a new game ecosystem? When they can put their game on tens of millions of mobile devices or potentially on one of the many consoles that you just mentioned, how do you get them excited about something like this? Right. Um, and you do because of the business model. And I think that's what makes Ouya really unique, that anybody can build a game, that you can charge and build any game that you want, that you don't have to have a business relationship with me or pay tens of thousands of dollars for the tools to build for Ouya. Right. You can do that all today. So actually now, I, this I raised a question that I had not thought of at all, and I really want to talk about. Because this is off the shelf stuff, fundamentally, um, and because people are very smart and clever, uh, don't you worry that people will just grab your, basically grab your ROM and flash something with it and have an OUYA? I mean, doesn't that some way, in, some, in some way circumvent your, your control of that ecosystem? And doesn't it become, I'm asking you like three questions at once now, but doesn't it become a challenge for the developers who will be obviously worried about Piracy, or you know, whether their stuff is in a controlled sure. environment versus a non, not controlled. Look, we use a controlled environment. Every piece of content that you will buy and download needs to have is, you know, is behind the server. Needs server authentication. We're doing other tools. We will be as secure as other Android devices, which probably doesn't make everybody that thrilled. But I think we will be more as well. Um, 
but it's the ecosystem. It's the developers that are coming. I mean, we've got exclusive content that you're not going to find anywhere else. Kim Swift is building a game for us. Um, Tim Schafer is bringing Reds, his Kickstarter project, to us. I mean, there's real sort of excitement and momentum behind this open game console that is the momentum that we're just trying to keep leveraging and, and delivering on. So, okay, so let's talk about that. So let's talk about games, and then we're actually going to circle back to some of the stuff you are talking about earlier. But uh, this is a uh, Tegra 3-based system. It's NVIDIA's, uh, one of NVIDIA's chips. Uh, gig of RAM, 8 gigs of storage on it. Like you said, it's kind of off the shelf. Uh, so the experiences that people are used to in the living room are incredibly immersive very vast game experiences, things like Halo, uh, Call of Duty, um, you know, Fallout 3, which I played for probably 60 hours or something ridiculous. You know, I spent a ton of time playing it. Uh, how can you deliver those kinds of graphically immersive and vast gaming experiences uh, on what is essentially the internals of a smartphone? It's a great question. Um, and the answer is simple. Yes, and why would we? Those experiences that you just talked about are great on those devices. You aren't going to want to play those games anywhere else. But I argue that we are going to have inventive, creative, exclusive, innovative content that you aren't going to find on those devices because it's hard to bring those types of games to those devices. Minority Media is building a game that actually leverages, they, they built Papa and Yo, um, that actually leverages the buttons and the touchpad, right? Because our controller has a touchpad. You're not going to find that somewhere else. Um, and the reality well, the is... New, the new PlayStation 4 controller has a touchpad, doesn't it? That's true. They could build it for that. So, but they're building it for me. That's what I know. Right, but so yeah. okay. But, but I guess my point is, we're going to have inventive, creative, exclusive content that no one else is going to have, which is the reason to buy Ouya. And moreover, for ninety-nine dollars, where every game is free to try, it's not an either or. It's not an either or decision. It's I want an Ouya also because it gives me this. So you see this as a companion device, then? Is that what you're saying? I mean, you, if, if I'm a gamer, right? You think I'm going to have one of those consoles? Most and, and core Ouya? gamers like yourself have two devices in their room, not just one console, but two. Right. And so it's potential that they may have a third here. Um, we're going to offer something different and unique. In the same way that when you play a game on your mobile phone or your tablet, you don't expect that console experience. You expect a different experience, and it has to be a great experience for, to, for you to continue inve your investment in that game. Right. It's the same thing for Ouya. We're going to have a different kind of game. It's going to be a different time of investment, but, it's all, but it will be an immersive invest in investment. Right. You will be emotionally involved in the game. We will transport you like you get transported on other consoles. It's different. So, you, so it's not important for you to have those kinds of games. I mean, is that what you're saying? I mean, we're, and I no. guess this gets, I guess my, no, we're going to have our version of those games, but it's going to be different, and we won't know until it gets uploaded into the store and we see. We will have a first-person shooter, single-map, kick-ass game that you will want to play for hours on end. Okay. Well, I'm very excited about that in that I'm case. I just, I just think it's, I mean, because you, you are competing with the, the biggest and the best when it comes to, to gaming. And the games that rope people in on those systems, they're not Temple Run. They're not uh, Cannibal, which are both excellent games, right? You know, they're not some of the amazing, they're not Angry Birds necessarily. Uh, they, are, they are the Call of Duty games. So how do yep. you get, how do you convince a broader audience. I mean, maybe maybe you're fine with a small audience, but how do you convince a broader audience to go and get one of these? I mean, is it price? Is it the free to play? Is it? I don't think it's a small audience. I mean, again, if you think about what's so exciting about mobile and tablet, it's the business model, it's the convenience factor. I mean, there are more gamers on Facebook and on mobile and on tablets than there are on traditional consoles. In fact, there are less people on the consoles than every other device out right, there for mobile games. But, ga but for they're gaming. on Facebook, on mobile, and, and on you know, tablets. And they're going to be on Ouya because it offers something different and unique, and in our case, exclusive. So you're, 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 but your argument here is that, that it's the game experience is first, not where you are. Because my thinking is that right. when I play a game on my phone or my tablet, it's because they, are, they tend to be more, more simple but, uh, and different than the console games I play. But it's also because I'm on my phone or I'm on mm -hmm. my tablet. What, is it, what indication do you have or what sign do you have that people want to take those experiences or yeah. similar experiences and bring them back and sit in front of their TV and have them? Let's take developers, for example. which We have 7,000 developers that have signed up for an account on Ouya. What's been the most sort of fascinating thing to learn is when, when we first started Ouya, 
during the early days, we heard a lot of, well, these are just going to be mobile ports. It's Android. Everyone knows Android. And we chose Android because it's so well known. But the fascinating thing in looking at who our developers are is that we have experienced game developers that have never built an Android game before. The majority of developers so far for OUYA have never built an Android game. So, I mean, we're growing that marketplace, and we're saying that there are great developers who know how to build those immersive, immersive games you know, coming back to the television, because that's their number one screen. That's where they want to build their right. games But for. when you say immersive, I think of the games that I just mentioned. You're saying, like, we don't want to do that. So give me an example of a no, game. No, I didn't say you want to do that. I'm just saying that it's going to be a different version of that. I'm not going to recreate Call of Duty. If you want to play Call of Duty with 10,000 of your closest friends, you're going to do that on Xbox. You are. That's great. But there's going to be a game that the only place that you can play it is going to be on Ouya. And it's going to be with the three friends day one that are sitting right next to you, because we're not going to have and to be a game community that I, multiplayer till the end of the year. It's going to be a game that I have to play that I want to play. You have to play. Can you tell me what that game is? I have a couple ideas. Can you tell me about some of the games that you have coming and, and, and why they're of interest to you and why they'll be of interest to um, to potential buyers? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, so we mentioned that Kim Swift and Airtight Games is building a game exclusively for us. She has a he phenomenal history in game development and design at coming from Valve. We're super excited what she's building. Paul Bettner, who did World with Friends, is building a new sort of couch play social game that we think will be super exciting for the television. You know, Tim Shaper's being Reds in the Cave to Ouya. Um, you know, and we've, we've mentioned a lot more. I mean, Square Enix is bringing Final Fantasy III to Ouya for the first time to the television with controller support. Um, so I think you're going to see a large sort of breadth of content from the AAAs all the way to the strong independents than you know and the guys that you don't know. And that's what's so exciting. It's getting that Sopranos that never would have existed without something like this. Right. And without the budget that it requires to. Right. Of course, the Sopranos had a very large budget because HBO was paying for it. So. You're not going to give people money to make games, are you? Blair Witch Project. How about that? Is that a good example? Uh, yeah. It's a very specific example. So you're going to get, produce the Blair Witch Project of games. Maybe. But, the, but here's the thing. <laughs> it led to tears, is what you're saying. Here's the thing. <laughs> it's possible. I right. mean, that's the thing. I mean, Uya is about enabling creators. It's in about in enabling the content creators to build what they want for the screen that they want without all of the hurdles that they have to go through. So what, so what happens if, so part of your, the premise for Ouya, part of what you feel will make it a success and what, why it's necessary is that you've got this very open model. You've got this, you know, developers are able to self-publish. Um, there's not a bunch of barriers, not a bunch of hoops they have to jump through. What happens if, uh, the, you know, PS4 and the next Xbox, they're, they're like, hey, we want to get all, everybody in here, self-publishing is a thing. It basically is the App Store, or some variation of the App Store for those big, big name consoles. How does that affect your business? Does it affect your business? It's like saying, what do you do if there's an earthquake, right? It's, yeah, what would you it's, do if there's an earthquake? It's like, is that yeah. gonna affect your business? <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things where it could happen, but it doesn't benefit me to spend time thinking about that. What right. we're doing is building a great product and getting it out to our fans, I mean, there is a real movement here. I mean, just the interest in our console and other new things that have hit the market just shows that there's an appetite by gamers for something new and different. Right. So, but you, so you don't feel that that's a threat. I mean, that's not something that your business doesn't hinge on that remaining your yeah. thing only. Mm -mm. So you mentioned AAA games. Do you think tr there will be? You know, Final Fantasy is obviously a well-known franchise. Um, are you speaking to developers, those AAA developers, those, you know, the Madden, you know, EA and Maddens of the world? Is that something that you want? I mean, okay, you said Call of Duty, you're not going to have the experience, you're going to have that experience on Xbox. But there are other games, big, Absolutely. big games. Yeah. What's the level of interest from those publishers and developers, and, and can you uh, share yeah, any, we're of, talking, any we're, of the look, titles with us today? We're, t <laughs> we're talking with all the AAAs. Um, the excitement and interest in Ouya is a couple things. One, it's bringing the games back to the television, which is where they feel that their games belong. Um, two, price point, the idea that they don't have to offer their game for 99 cents or $1.99. They can really price the game at what they want. And at least now, and what Kickstarter has shown and all the, the units we've been selling since and the, the retailers that have been signing up is that there's real you know, excitement from gamers that this will exist. Right. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, we're, I know we're going to have games from AAA all the way down to Indies. And the thing about AAA that's really interesting is it's not always about that experience, right? It's about that character or that IP. You have a relationship with them. You want to play that character on every single device because you enjoy playing in that world. You enjoy being a part of that. And so bringing that to Ouya, of course, makes sense. And we're working with a number of them to do that. You um, told us a little while ago that you were in conversations with um, Google, Netflix, Amazon, and Hulu about bringing their services to, uh, to Ouya, to think of it as not just a gaming box, but also kind of a set-top for yeah. video. Can you, can you talk about, um, are any of those happening? Or is there, is there, when this thing launches, when I can go buy it at a Best Buy, will, I, will Netflix be there? Will Hulu be there? Will um, Google Play content be there? No, it's great. I mean, look, Ouya's built on Android, which means that in addition to games, we're going to have content. We already announced partners like Vivo and iHeartRadio and TuneIn. We will have streaming video partners. Flixster's in beta right now. We're going to try to get that live as soon as possible, maybe even for unveiling a number of the partners you talk to. We feel pretty confident we're going to have close to, if not at launch. Okay. So yeah, and it's going to evolve over time. We're going to keep adding partners and what is that? And what is that? And what is the official launch date for re proper retail? June. June. Okay, so you got a little bit of time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, now, we have time to get it better and to continue to bring on content. What if, a, games. What if an independent publisher uh, that may be focused on tech-related video wanted to be part of the Ouya store? How would they? How would they do that? How would they? Who would they have to talk to? To be part. You of You know, it? if I wanted to, if I wanted to have my video, if I want to have some Verge video on on Ouya at launch. Build an Android app, upload it to the store, oh, and you'll be live. Okay. We take that long. We have to talk about this after the interview, because um, I definitely want to do that. Uh, so thank you. So how are you? How are you handling this retail launch? I'm curious because it's a huge undertaking. Yes. And you, you guys are starting from scratch here. You don't have some big infrastructure. You're not Sony. Um, how do you go about orchestrating a launch? You said June, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is a vague question, but what does that require for a company that has no, you guys don't have trucks, you don't have factories. Um, can you talk a little bit about that, about some of the difficulties yeah, actually Yeah, I mean, since doing, I headed up doing... operations as of two weeks ago, finally. First of all, it's about, um, you have to have, a, we have, I have an unbelievable team. Um, I have an unbelievable set of partners who have done this before. I mean, this, like you said, is a big arc undertaking. Hardware is hard, um, but we're trying to make it as easy as possible by partnering with the best people in the industry and that have done this before. So we have partnered with people that have relationships with the retailers that have a vendor of record number, so I don't have to go out and get those. Um, I have somebody who runs special ops for us, or operations, sales and logistics, I like calling them special ops, um, who has done a global international release for another product before. So he knows exactly what we have to do. Um, we know our timelines. We know how much money we have in the bank. We know what to ask for. Um, there's a lot we're doing for the first time, but this one piece is something that's been done before, and we know how to do it. How do you measure success um, with this? I mean, obviously, Kickstarter was a huge success. The excitement, I mean, w I've talked about it with people in the industry, and there is this weird excitement with you guys that is just so new and different. Uh, and I'm excited about it. I was actually saying backstage I can that... Tell. No, I am. And I was saying I don't have a lot of like hardballs here because I, w I want this thing to work. I think it's a cool idea. Thank you. But, but um, you know, how, I mean, for you, it, it's, it's, it seems like um, it's, it's such a new model and there's so many things that could go wrong here. You know, is there one fear for you? Is there one thing that stands out as if we don't do this, um, it's not going to work? And then to, my question on that, I want to know that, but also, like, how do you measure success with something like this sure. because it is so new? Um, I'll start with the second question first. Okay, um, yeah. Just because you actually asked it first. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I, and then I got all back, um, back into it. How do you measure success? For us, it's momentum. I mean, for us, it's selling more units every month, every additional month selling more than the previous month, getting, getting great content and games onto the box. Um, that's success for us. Each month showing that we've got something new, something exciting, something that's going to wow gamers. I mean, for $99, this is the insert your name here box, right? It will be the, your favorite game or your favorite app, and you're going to be like, I want to play that, and I have to get Ouya to play it, because it's the only place it will be. Um, 
So that's how we define success. Momentum. Um, momentum. And, and developers being happy. Every single month they see more downloads, but more importantly, they see more engagement. I mean, the one thing that we're trying to do different with Ouya is how we think about the developers and how we define what a good game is. You know, historically, people define something good as the number of downloads you've gotten or just the amount of revenue it's generated. And I actually don't think those are good indicators of a good game or if the game was fun, right? Like, what are fun metrics? Fun metrics are engagement metrics. They're how many times you've interacted with that game over a certain period of time. It's how many times you've told your friends to play that game. It's how many times from the moment you you know, turn on Ouya, it's instant on, it'll be on right away. It's how many times from the moment you do that do you launch that game, right? That tells you it's a good game. And so that's how we think about discovery, and that's how we're going to try to curate the content, that it's really about what you enjoy playing, and if you enjoy playing it, other people enjoy playing it, and that's how we want to expose it. Um, but momentum is vague. I mean, is there a number that you have to more, hit? Is there a, a, a number of units you need to ship to, for this thing to, to keep going, to get to Ouya 2, which I'm sure you're working on? I have. Um, a, a good friend who's also doing a hardware startup, and they told me early on that the, the one thing that they were right about every single month was how wrong they were about their forecasts, um, because you just don't know. I mean, right. we, our velocity is already greater than what we'd forecast, but you don't know. I mean, these are, you know, so far we've been getting great feedback and a lot of support, um, but these units are going to be in Kickstarter's hands and, you know, 20 some odd days, and we're gonna have two more months to keep perfecting it and improving it, and then we'll see. I mean, I think we just have to keep making it better and better each month. I mean, we don't have to exceed expectations, that's not our goal. Our goal is to meet expectations which are high enough. Um, you know, internally my team says that we do the impossible every day. I mean, this is nine months from beginning to here. Right. I mean, it's unfathomable what, what the team has accomplished um, and how good we, you know, and how pr proud of it. We are. And is there and what is that one thing that it could trip you guys up at this point? You have momentum, right? right? We know that it's the momentum you're looking for is currently happening. Is there something that you're like, this is a red flag? Is it is it delays? Is it, it has to work. Does it not work? No, it works. Should but I be like, worried? No, but like you're you're put your <laughs> tens of thousands of units are coming off the line, right? right. It's got to pair. You know, you, you know, it's it, there's got to be great content. I mean, you know, there's not just one thing. Right. It's gonna be a lot of things and you know what we've been, because we did this such a different way, right? Because we embraced our fans and our audience and made them a part of this. I mean, so much of Ouya is because they asked for it. We have an ethernet port because so many of our international backers said their Wi-Fi was terrible because they live in brick, box, brick houses, right? So we had an ethernet port. When we first got our boards at the end of October, in order for us to hook it up to our PCs um, and Macs, we actually had to unscrew it, pull out the board, find a connector, plug it in inside, because we didn't have a micro USB port. It wasn't easy. So now we've added a micro USB port. So this continues to get better, and I expect it to continue to get better between March and June, and from June to the holidays and then on. But the actual hardware isn't going to change at this point, is it? I mean, the specs? For Ports. No, we're launching with this. Okay, this is it. This is it. And, and, are, you, and are you already thinking about Generation 2? There will be, I'm thinking of the fact there will be a generation two, right. um, but that will be sometime next year and we'll figure it out. The reality is we're just focusing on delivering this great product. Right. And, and so it's got eight, gig of, eight gigs of storage. Yes. You can hook up a USB hard drive. Right. Um, but there's no micro SD slot or anything. Correct. Uh, you know, does that worry you at all? Like, do you, do you feel like the type of game you're going to be able to do, and I know we've already kind of gone over this, but the type of game you're going to be able to do is certainly limited to, you've got space considerations, how many games you can actually have on the thing at once, right. and then you're saying, hey, go get a hard drive and, and plug Look, it in. The, the, the hardest of the core, the, the major gamers that love libraries of 20, 40, 50 games, I don't think it's a big leap to, say, attach a hard drive. We may bundle, hard, we may bundle USB sticks you know, with Ouya's at some point at retail. I mean, I'm actually not that concerned about that. We're working with developers so that their save files are always in the cloud. So if someone should remove a game but then want to bring it back, your place is still saved. Um, and Ouya would allow the streaming of games too. So it's really up to the developer on how they want to and yeah. how they want to bring content to Ouya. Actually, I want to talk about that. You said streaming. Um, you talked about OnLive, mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, OnLive has gone through some pretty monumental changes. 
What's the status of, of OnLive and Ouya? Is there, is there sure. a partnership there? Yeah, I mean, from what I can tell, they're coming out the other side even stronger than before. We're super excited to have OnLive on the box, and we're working with them to make it happen as soon as possible. So you're going to have OnLive streaming as an app on the, uh, on the box. Is that the that's, idea? That's one way, yes. So if I want to do AAA, that's like an easy path. There you have it. Right? OK. That's, maybe that'll solve. I made you smile. Maybe that, yeah. It well, only maybe took 30 That might solve my, 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 uh, my Call of Duty problem there you go. that I have. Uh, my bad you. My bad problem. Um, so early on, I want to I talk about some controversy. <laughs> uh, Please. Three, early uh, when you um, announced your Kickstarter, uh, there was an article written that accused uh, you guys of being a scam. So that PC, was my favorite article. PC if you magazine, would have Googled, PC if, you, magazine if you Googled Ouya for the first, I want to say 60, 90, I don't know, 120 days, the first thing that would come up is Ouya is a scam. Yeah. Can you explain to me your, why, why there was a negative, why there was a backlash to Ouya? I mean, do you have a, a sense of what, why that occurred? Um, look, it's... First of all, I mean, I think our, look, our path to market was unique. Again, we didn't, this wasn't built, and I didn't put it up on a shelf and say, here it is, support this. It was like, we have this great idea. I have a team of people can do it. By the way, I didn't tell you who the team was. I didn't even have a website when we launched Kickstarter, which was, I think, one of the reasons. Like, which there's no address, yeah. there's no website, this must be a scam. And the reality is, I just wanted to focus on one thing, which was this you, campaign. But you had been working on this for a, a while before oh, yeah. you, you took it Over to Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. And you never thought, hey, we should get a web page? Why? I don't know, because you're on the, the internet. Origi the traditional path. Because <laughs> you're launching a Kickstarter? No. Find out I more on our page. web page? I had a web page. Uya.tv pointed you right to the Kickstarter, because at the end of the day, if I didn't get $950,000, this wouldn't have existed. And you didn't know that you were going to, you, you didn't feel confident? Did you feel confident or not confident you were going to get your money? I had no idea. I was scared shitless. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look. It's, and then eight hours later, it was No, it wasn't even eight hours later. So. It was like 5.45 in the morning, because you know, to do this right, you've got to time the East Coast with West Coast. I hit the button, I immediately leave the page, and I'm just sending out emails for hours, right, to friends and colleagues, people in the industry, just letting them know that this exists and this is here. And about 11 o'clock in the morning, my sister, some of my close friends, Roshana and Evelyn, and my mom came over, and they all, you know, miraculously became sick, and they couldn't go back to work for the rest of the day because they were getting nothing done because they kept hitting refresh. So it was about lunchtime where I realized that this was something that yeah. there was, this was something to the extent that there was a need for this. Like there was a void in the marketplace at that time. So this time last year, there was nothing new announced at E3. There was, there was, there was no new hardware. Um, the games were becoming sequel after sequel. There wasn't anything people were super excited about. There was really a void. Yeah. And as much as you know, you and I, I think, enjoy playing Temple Run or whatever on our tablet, it's just a different experience. It's not the kind of experience we love. It's not leveraging the HD graphics or the surround sound of the living room and playing with your close friends and you know, having your fingers hurt at the end because you're gripping your controller so hard. Um, and that was the experience I wanted to be back. And then we heard that people wanted it to, that they wanted it so much that they gave us money before it was even built. And that's why we have been working so hard to deliver this on time. And but I, but I feel like you're dodging like my question, which is, is Ouya a scam oh. or not? No, when we're I, not a scam. When I, when I get this, no, when, I get my, when I get my Ouya box on March 28th, you will it just go. be a, a weighted piece of plastic in there? Or will there be a functioning game console? Are there any developers in the room that have built a game for Ouya or have it running? Really not. Oh, there's Wait, one. We got one. So Where is Ouya a scam? <laughs> Validation. Well, I'm glad we could clear that Thank up. Thank you. It'd be amazing if you came all this way to South by Southwest to uh, this stage, and then you were like, actually, it's a giant Ponzi scheme. Yeah. I'm escaping to the Cayman Islands. I'm not going to say anything like that, because it'll get quoted out of context, and I will be in big trouble. You did not um, say it was a Ponzi scheme. We do not have to quote. So we actually have some no. questions uh, coming in on, on Twitter, and I think we should answer some of them. This was actually interesting. Um, the question is uh, from Neil Rubenstein, uh, at Neil Ruby. How will games be analyzed to make sure they are appropriate? More importantly, how long will this process take? So at first, I didn't understand what he was asking, but this is a question of review. Well, review, and I, I'm assuming like content, right? I yep. mean, it's not just review for bugs and malware or whatever, but this is a content question. So what is your process? What kind of, um, how, how are you making decisions about what's appropriate and inappropriate for certain sure. age groups? So we'll start with a shameless plug for devs.ilya.tv, which is where you would go to download our development kit and get this information. 
we have content guidelines because we want to make sure that the content on Ouya is great. Um, but we don't have quality review guidelines. So we make sure that there's no major pornography or malware or bugs or major, it doesn't crash sorry, all the time. Major pornography. Whatever. Can you pornography, tell me what the, what I don't know. The, I want to know it's the, a judgment what are the other options there. Yeah, minor. <laughs> like minor slight pornography. I can show you something. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Let's hook that up when we get you know, no done with this. No IP infringement. You say who you are, right? You don't elicit world world <laughs> real world violence. Say that ten times. Um, you know, we try to do, right now we say it takes three days, it's taking less. Every single day we'll update our content guidelines to tell you exactly how long it's taking so you can plan accordingly. But, you'll have but we want to make sure that the content is up there. It's optimized for the television, it's optimized for the controller. But yeah, that's a good ratings? experience. We have self ratings for right now, so the developer self rate. So and then, of course, we've got the button that says it's an abuse. If it is, right. and you know, we have a rating system from a from a play perspective of thumbs up. But if I want to do a game that's like tons of porn in it, and <laughs> but like very violent, like full on adult, like for goes. adults only, triple X game. Not, can I do that on Nuya? Please, mm. please say yes. If it's your game, okay, maybe. <laughs> but I, but no, but as yeah. a developer, can I can I do things I couldn't do? As long as it adheres to the content guidelines. Okay. Yeah. So just minor pornography and we're good to go, basically. Minor. You really are bad. You're bad that I'm bringing that back up. OK, let's move on to another question. Uh, how about an Ouya tailored oh, for education? Awesome. I don't fully understand this one, but I mean, I'm, I'm going to let you try So to it's actually it. a great question. Um, I've actually seen, so if you send a, a question to customer support, there is a good chance that I will answer them because I spend a lot of time reading them and responding because I want to know what people care about and how we can make it better. Um, one thing that we are trying to do just for you know, the education of gamers and gaming is really trying to bring developers and gamers together. So one thing that you'll see when you get your Ouya that I think is really unique to us is that we have a channel on Ouya called Make. And eventually it will evolve into a channel where developers can interact one-to-one -one with their gamers at the point with which they are most excited about a game and can per potentially purchase it right there. But at the beginning, it's going to be a place where we'll, we'll give you videos on how to build a game, how to build a, a, a trailer to promote your game, um, to sort of help the educational process. I mean, we don't make games. We expect other people to do, but we want to enable and help it. Um, I'm also working with my special ops guy to create a program where we do donate games to schools that we can just get more creators creating great content for the television. Ed, ed, but educational games, or no? For, for education, if it's for educational games, that's great. If, if it's a 16-year-old that wants to build a great game, that's great too. OK, OK. Um, this is kind of a big one. Uh, do you feel that this will fundamentally change relationships between game houses, console makers, and gamers as a whole? Just a small question. Will it fundamentally alter the landscape of gaming as we know it? I think it's already changing the landscape of gaming. I think mobile changed the landscape of gaming, and before that, Facebook, and before that, the PC. I mean, there are tons of creators out there that have great ideas, that have envisioned in their head how they want to bring it to market. And what we're doing is we're opening up the television and saying, you can bring it to the television if that's how you envision it. And do you see, I mean, I guess I'm wondering, and this kind of touches on some of the stuff that we talked about before, but do you see Ouya getting to a point where there's a parody? I mean, I, know, I don't mean to be harping on this, but I want there to be one box. Like, I love the idea of this being <laughs> open. And, you know, yes, the AAA stuff and the bigger games are going to be tough at first, but do you see you guys, with the way you're moving, getting to a place where you say, we can do both, and we can be open doing both. We can yeah. do these big AAA games because we have the hardware and the storage and whatever's necessary for that, and the developers, and we can do all this indie stuff and let it kind of bubble up to the top. Is that, yeah. is that a, a place you want to go? I mean, to some extent, we can do it all today. And we can run streaming music, we can, re we can run streaming um, video, we can run great games. I mean, this was dubbed the people's console. You know, the indie box, right? Because it's allowing anybody to be a creator and a developer for us. Um, and I think an indie developer can develop the next AAA game. I mean, who's to decide what that, you have to be, you know, an EA or an Activision to build a AAA game. That's, that's right. crap, and, right? And you fact, just have to have a great game that a lot of people love playing and are engaged in. And I think you're going to find that on Ouya next. And the truth is that AAA has gotten really stale and boring. I mean, I think we can agree that. Uh, you don't have, you won't say that. You're not going to agree with me on stage. But I, I think, know in your eyes you're saying that it, AAA has gotten stale and boring. And that's why Ouya has to exist. There's a lot of momentum <laughs> for this, this on the stuff? console that, you know, we're fortunate to be leading right now. And I think, I think the massive excitement and interest for something new speaks to that.
So I like this question a lot. Is OUYA still planning to be an open, hackable box? To me, this is a real differentiator. This is D Ayers. Um, Danny. Well, there are four hex screws on top of OUYA. So you can unscrew it, pull it off, pull the board out. Yes, the answer so is yes. At, at what point does, um, I mean, the, your software is proprietary. You, your ecosystem is this proprietary piece, right? At what point, like, what can I do with this? Do, can it get to a point where I hack it enough that somehow you don't feel comfortable uh, having that version Yeah, I mean, or whatever variation. you do with it, look, the, the, what you do is going to be done to your box. It's not necessarily going to make it out to everywhere, and that's why we feel comfortable. And we're locking content behind servers. So but if I, I wanted to, let's say I want to start a business selling hack to you, is, you guys wouldn't have an issue with that. It comes with the territory, it's a possibility. Would you wholesale me some OUYAs so I could do that? <laughs> <laughs> I know you can buy some. Yeah, at a, at a wholesale price? No. Okay. Well, that doesn't help me at all. Um, this is a question about community gamers. Do you know if devs integrating social components, um, how many launch titles expected? So two questions there. But the social one, you mentioned that that head-to-head uh, -head or multiplayer gaming is not coming at launch, right? So um, local multiplayer, we're seeing it today. In fact, I'm actually right. blown away by the number of local multiplayer games we're seeing. I mean, I think OUYA is really going to bring back couch play. I mean, it, it's alive and well. Um, as far as sort of traditional multiplayer achievements, leaderboards, community, that's something that we are building. It won't be there in June, but it will be there hopefully sometime this year. Um, there's a lot of features and functionality we want to add, and we will be very open with our, our, our supporters and fans about what we're adding when to. So you think by the end of the year, though, I'll be able to have those, uh, a similar experience to what I have with something like Xbox I think you'll Live. have an OUYA experience. A better, so a better experience than what I have with Xbox Live. Is that what you're telling me? No, it's saying better. I'm just <laughs> no, saying. I know. We're, we, you know. But but you, yeah. th that is coming. That's going yeah, to be a part of this coming. console. Yeah, I mean, look, we are trying to launch something in an incredibly short amount of time. We're getting it out to the Kickstarter backers a couple months before it's available to everyone else in retail. And so there are some features that you just can't get to. Something as, as important as community is something that we want to do right and take our time on. We also want to make sure there's a large enough audience that it will be exciting and fun when when we engage in it. So it makes sense that it's a fast follow and it, you know I do, ideally it'll be out soon right yeah um, I don't know if I fully understand this question is leaving it up to the developer a good idea especially with the whole sim city DRM issue <laughs> uh, I mean I think that they're talking about what certain leaving choices yeah absolutely I mean, but, but it's you, don't, absolutely you don't have a choice though do you I mean it's not like you guys are gonna stand in the middle of it in any real fundamental way when it comes yeah, to Yeah, I mean, look, the developers made that choice. Um, and I'm sure they had reasons for why they did that. We're going to enable developers to have control over their game, price point, type of game, um, everything. Oh, you did not answer the launch. How many launch titles? I don't know. We just opened up our store last week, so we're just starting to get apps. Um, there's a great website out there called OUYA Forms, which does an unbelievable job tracking. Um, it's one of these unofficial community sites that we love, and they're, they're saying we have over 481 titles announced for us. Um, we'll see how many get submitted. We have 7,000 developers, 37,000 ODKs. Our software development kit has been downloaded, so we're really excited for launch. You know, and our hope is there will be that one game that is the reason that you buy this. The game that everybody wants to the play. The game that you want and the game that she wants. Um, oh, this is kind of interesting, but kind of boring, but also interesting. What kind of warranty will come with the OUYA? What are the limitations to support? Yeah, how are you handling support? I mean, other than me? And, and yeah, you're gonna you're gonna say set it back. <laughs> I'm in my hat and my Uggs yeah. or whatever it is uh, you wear. No, I mean we have tradition. We have warranties similar to the other sort of console makers. A year warranty on the console. I think it's three months on the controller, but don't quote me. I mean, look, we want you to love it and we want it to work. And I assume that once I open it up and start hacking it, does, what happens to my warranty? Um, it doesn't necessarily avoid it. It depends on what you do. If what you've done makes it not work, that's not necessarily our fault. But if it doesn't work and it should work based on what you've done, then that's our fault. Oh, interesting. Um, <laughs> this is good. I, I don't know if you really want to answer this or not. Um, how have the console <laughs> giants reacted to OUYA? Has it been like big oil to electric cars? I don't know. Have you, have you felt any pressure to get out of the business? <laughs> Has anybody come to your house late at night with a bat? No. <laughs> a Microsoft bat? No uninvited visitors. So. Have, has anybody, have any of these guys come around and said, hey, we'd like to buy you, we like what you're doing? I mean, anecdotally, I've, been, I've met and had a ton of producers um, at the 
traditional console um, companies reach out to me and shake my hand and tell me they bought a new yet. So that's exciting to But me. nobody's come along and said, um, why don't we give you some money and you go away quietly? No. It's not going to happen. Really? Not yeah. going to happen. We're not going away. Um, will there be a way to purchase games without having to give out your credit card like Wii Points uh, yeah. you can buy in stores? So that's a great question. So everything on Ouya is free to try. You don't have to pay anything to play. But we do collect your payment information up front. So today it's a credit card and a debit card. By June it'll be a prepaid token or digital code. Um, and then as we grow internationally, we'll add other payment options, we'll add currency support, we'll add localization. Um, it is important that we get that information up front. Whether or not you ever charge anything is totally up to you, but we will ask for it. Yeah, what's the international picture look like for, for Ouya? I mean, how, how much are you grappling with you know, getting these out to people yeah. all around? I mean, Kickstarter is not... You're not just dealing with people in the U.S. No, Canada. Kickstarter I mean, is that's global. Worldwide, I mean, so we are sending, we are selling. Sorry, we are sending Uyas to 110 countries, and I think there's only 180 countries or something. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a huge number. We have got distributors in over 60 countries that want to distribute Uya. Um, I've got a great team of people working on it and thinking through our rollout. I mean, we want it to be thoughtful. We want it to be tempered. I mean, the thing that's different about hardware versus software is the more successful you are, the more money you need. I mean, we have to create these units. Um, so we want to be thoughtful, but we also want to make sure that, you know, if there's demand, we find a way to meet it in a, a timely manner. So how are you handling, but, but when it comes to a developer doing localizations or whatever, mm -hmm. that's up to them. I mean, Correct. If, so if I do a game and it's only in English, I can release it worldwide, but people just have to, to learn how to read English. Yeah, the developer can it. choose if they want to do worldwide or if they want to um, restrict it to a certain region or a specific country, absolutely. So we're, we're down to a minute and a half here. We're going to wrap up. I'm going to take, we do a couple more of these questions. Lightning round. Will you be capable of interacting with other hardware within a network, such as Wi-Fi light bulbs? <laughs> Is that, that seems like a, maybe something you've been thinking a lot about. Will Ouya be compatible? I'm sure someone will build the capability for that. We are just focused on building a great game console for launch. Do you see any potential for gaming yeah, with Wi-Fi light bulbs? Yeah, look, we made it Wi-Fi. We made it Bluetooth. You can pair other devices. You can build other accessories for Ouya. I mean, it's open to be open. Right. So, okay, so we have, we have a minute. I, I, I just want to know, and we may have some other, hold on, let me, I'm going to just ask you my question. Um, <laughs> what is the, what is the thing, what is the, what, I want to know, is there a game that you want to play or that you're, that you're playing now that is the thing that is just getting you really excited for this as a viable product? Is there a game that you feel like is going to be the game yet? that brings this to when people see it, they're like, oh, I have to, I'm going to spend the 99 bucks because I have to play this game. Does that exist yet, or is it yet to come? I think there's a couple games that have the potential to be that. Can you name it's one It's early. Of them? I'm loving playing Chronoblade on Ouya. Um, Stalagfight is an amazing sort of indie game um, that we can't put down in the office. It would never, it may not ever make it to a television if it wasn't for Ouya, and it's those games that excite me. Okay, I think it's a good place to leave it. Julie, thank you so awesome. much. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you guys. You.